In this example, we'll learn what an empirical formula is and how we can find it, given the percent masses of elements in a compound. An organic compound is analyzed by a mass spectrometer and found to be 39.233% carbon, 1.829% hydrogen, 38.603% chlorine, and 20.335% nitrogen by mass. Determine the empirical formula for this compound. Now what exactly is an empirical formula? Let's look at an example of a different compound. Let's say the molecular formula for a compound is C10H6Cl8. The molecular formula tells us how many atoms of each element are in one molecule of this compound. So one molecule has 10 C atoms, 6 H atoms, and 8 Cl atoms. The empirical formula gives the smallest whole number ratio of atoms. Taking a look at the molecular formula C10H6Cl8, the subscripts 10, 6, and 8 are all divisible by 2. So we write a new formula in which all the subscripts have been divided by 2, which is C5H3Cl4. This is called the empirical formula, and it gives the smallest whole number ratio of atoms. The 5, 3, and the 4 cannot be reduced any further. And it means for every 5 C atoms, there are 3 H atoms, and 4 Cl atoms. So the empirical formula tells us there are 5 C atoms to 3 H atoms to 4 Cl atoms. Of course, single atoms are too small to count individually, but moles of atoms are something we can actually measure and compare in the lab. Since a mole of any entity is the same number, it follows that there are 5 moles of C atoms to 3 moles of H atoms to 4 moles of Cl atoms. Starting with the mass of each element in a given sample of a compound, we can find the ratio of moles of each kind of atom, and therefore the empirical formula. Now in this example here, we're given the percent masses of elements rather than the actual masses. However, all we need to do is pretend we have a 100 gram sample. In a 100 gram sample, 39.233% of the 100 grams is carbon. So that would mean there are 39.233 grams of carbon. Similarly, 1.829% of the 100 grams is hydrogen, so that would mean there are 1.829 grams of hydrogen. And the grams of chlorine and nitrogen are also equal to their percent masses. So the original statement of the problem, where percent masses are given, can be changed so that percent masses are simply changed to grams, like this here. We can organize our calculations in a handy table. It has six columns, something like this. Since we have four elements, we'll make five rows. In the first column, we write the symbol for each element. In the second column, we note the mass of each element. In the third column, we convert mass in grams to moles of atoms. In order to find the simplest ratio, we divide the moles of atoms of each element by the smallest number of moles. This we do in the fourth column. We leave a blank in the fifth column and write the whole number ratio in the sixth column. Now let's use this to carry out our example. The first element is carbon, and its mass is 39.233 grams. The next element is hydrogen, which has a mass of 1.829 grams. Then chlorine, with a mass of 38.603 grams. And finally nitrogen, with a mass of 20.335 grams. Now to calculate the moles of atoms of carbon, we take the grams of carbon and multiply by the conversion factor 1 mole of C atoms to 12 grams. Notice we write the atomic mass of carbon by the grams. This gives us 3.27 moles of carbon atoms. We do a similar calculation for hydrogen. We take 1.829 grams and multiply by the conversion factor 1 mole of H atoms per 1 gram. It's important to remember we use atomic mass of H, not the molar mass of H2 here. When calculating moles of atoms, we always use atomic mass. The atomic mass of hydrogen is 1.0 grams per mole. This gives us 1.83 moles of hydrogen atoms to two decimal places. For chlorine, we take 38.603 grams. And since the atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5, 
we multiply by the conversion factor 1 mole to 35.5 grams. We get 1.09 moles of chlorine atoms. And finally, for nitrogen, we take the 20.335 grams, multiplied by the conversion factor 1 mole to 14.0 grams, the atomic mass of nitrogen. And we get 1.45 moles of nitrogen atoms. Now carefully comparing the four values for the numbers of moles, we see that the smallest value is 1.09 moles. So in the next column, we'll divide each of the values for moles by 1.09. For carbon, 3.27 divided by 1.09 equals 3.00. For hydrogen, 1.83 divided by 1.09 equals 1.68. For chlorine, 1.09 divided by 1.09, of course, is equal to 1.00. For nitrogen, 1.45 divided by 1.09 gives 1.33. Now, if all these values for moles divided by the smallest moles were whole numbers, we could have our simplest whole number ratios. But you can see in this case, they're not all equal to or even very close to whole numbers. The value for hydrogen and nitrogen are nowhere near whole numbers. Let's see what we need to do to make all these whole. We have a table here where we look at the numbers after the decimal point in the values of moles divided by smallest moles, and it tells us what to multiply all the values by in order to get whole numbers. Since 0.5 is the fraction 1 half, if the value for moles divided by smallest moles ends in a decimal close to 0.5, then multiply the values for all of the elements by 2. Since 0.33 is 1 third and 0.66 is 2 thirds, if the value for moles divided by smallest moles ends in a decimal close to either of these, then multiply the values for all the elements by 3. Since 0.25 is 1 quarter and 0.75 is 3 quarters, if the value for moles divided by smallest moles ends in a decimal close to any of these, then multiply the values for all of the elements by 4. Since 0.2 is 1 fifth, 0.4 is 2 fifths, 0.6 is 3 fifths, and 0.8 is 4 fifths, if the value for moles divided by smallest moles ends in a decimal close to any of these, then multiply the values for all of the elements by 5. Notice the value for hydrogen ends in 0.68, which is very close to 0.66, and the value for nitrogen ends in 0.33. We could multiply all of the values here by 3. To keep the ratio what it is, we must always multiply every value by the same factor. And that factor in this case, again, is 3. This is what the fifth column is for. We put a times 3 in each box like this. Now we multiply each value by 3 and put the answers in the ratio column. 3 times 3 is equal to 9. 1.68 times 3 is equal to 5.04. And 5.04 is very close to the whole number 5. So we just write 5 here. 1 times 3 is, of course, equal to 3, and 1.33 times 3 is equal to 3.99. Now, 3.99 is very close to the whole number 4, so we write 4 here. Now we have the whole number ratios of moles for all of the four elements. So the empirical formula is C9, H5, Cl3, N4. And that's the final answer to this question.